Hi everybody, this is lesson 79, insufficient information and quantitative comparison. And those are a lot of big words. So let's talk about what insufficient information means. Some problems will give you enough information to actually solve the problem, and some of them won't. And in some cases, um, when they don't give you enough information to solve the problem, the answer will simply be insufficient information, meaning they don't give us enough information in this problem to actually solve it. And an example of that would be if you're following along in your book on page 532, um, under the first section where it talks about insufficient information, it gives us the example that says a 10 pound bag of potatoes costs $1.49. What is the average price of each potato? Well, I know the temptation would be to just simply say $1.49 divided by 10, which would be 10 pounds, but that doesn't get us the answer that they're actually looking for. They asked, it, what is the cost of each potato? Well, the problem doesn't tell us how many potatoes are in each bag. So, therefore, we don't have enough information to, to answer the question that they're asking. So, in that case, we actually write for the answer, insufficient information. And so that's basically what it means. There will be times when you encounter problems now that they simply won't give you enough information for you to give an answer. And so your answer will be insufficient information. I know the temptation will be anytime you don't understand something or anytime you just think there's not enough inf information to just write insufficient information, but we really need to think through the problems and make sure that there truly isn't enough information before we actually write that as our answer. So let's move on to the examples in this lesson. There are three of them, and we're going to talk about quantitative comparisons. So let's get started. Okay, in example one, it tells us that there, it's a comparison problem. We're comparing X to Y. And we're familiar, of course, with the greater than, less than, or equal to um, symbols. And so we are going to um, consider comparison problems in this lesson where the information provided sometimes is, is sufficient enough to make the comparison and sometimes it's not. So in example one, it says the numbers X and Y are both whole numbers and compare them. Well, whole numbers would be anything from zero, one, two, three, and so on, all on the positive side. There are no negatives in whole numbers, so just zero and higher. So X and Y could be any of those numbers, which means X could be one, Y could be two. That would mean Y is greater. However, X could be two and Y could be one, so that means Two, the x could be greater. They could both be 1, in which case that would be equal. So based on what they tell us, that they're both whole numbers, that is not enough information to solve this problem. So in that case, the answer is actually insufficient information. I don't expect you to have to write out those big words, insufficient information, all the time, but if you will simply abbreviate and just put INS info, that is a good abbreviation for insufficient information information. And so in example one, there simply just is not enough information to actually solve that problem. So let's move on to example two. Example two says the number x is positive and the y is negative. So we're comparing again, comparing x and y. They do tell us that x is a positive number and that y is a negative number. So can we compare those? Let's think about it. On a number line, anything above the zero, of course, is positive. Anything below the zero is negative. So if x is always a positive and y is always a negative, then x has to always be greater than y, no matter what the numbers are. So in that case, we do have enough information and we know that x would be greater than. So that one is, if you think through it, that one's fairly easy to figure out. Let's move on to example three. Example three says, compare A to B. And if it, this is, there's a condi condition, A minus B equals zero. So can we tell which one is greater, A or B, based on this condition, this, this scenario? So let's just think of some answers. So let's say A is two. What would B have to be in order to get zero? Well, we know 
to get to 0 from 2, we'd have to subtract 2. If that's the case, they would both be equal. So let's try another example. If A is 7, what would B have to be to get to 0? 7 again. Again, those numbers would have to be the same, which means A and B would have to be equal. That's enough information to tell us that A and B are equal. They have to be the same number in order for this scenario to work. So if you think through these problems, they kind of do make sense. Those are the examples in our lesson. I do want to do one other uh, problem to just show you how some of these work, and that is in the lesson practice, the practice set on letter C. So this is going to be letter C, also at the bottom of 533. And it says, compare A to B, but then it gives us a condition. If A times B equals 1. So if we think about some scenarios where this is correct or this is true, we can figure this out. Okay, let's say A is uh, let's say A is 1. Well, what times 1 equals 1? One? 1. So in that case, you would have equal. They would be, both have to be equal. What if, however, A is 1 half? What would you have to multiply times 1 half to get to 1? It would have to be 2 over 1, or simply 2. In that case, B is greater, so we would point the greater towards B. What if A is 2, or 2 over 1? We would have to multiply it by 1 half to get to 1. In that case, the A would be greater. So we've plugged in different numbers, and we get all different answers, which means we don't have enough information to compare A to B. So our answer would be insufficient information. So these problems just require you to think through different scenarios, you know, run a few numbers through and see if you can figure out um, if it, if, if the, when you put different examples in or put different numbers in, if it's always going to be the same or if it's sometimes you're going to get a different result. If you get different results, then the answer usually is insufficient inf information. So hopefully that won't be too difficult to figure out. Just have to think through them and use your brains to figure it out. So if you have any questions, let me know.